Good uh, afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for joining. In fact, I'm not going to be quite as broad as uh, Brian suggests because Oxford's global health tropical medicine interests are, as you probably worked out by now, pretty vast. And I don't think there's anybody that knows everything about, well, even what they all are. Um, so I'm going to focus uh, on the Oxford Tropical Medicine Overseas Units. So this, uh, the, these are based out of the Centre for Tropical Medicine and Global Health in the NDM. Um, and uh, we, we have, this, this is all from their, from their website actually, I've sort of stolen it. Uh, we have uh, three overseas units. So called, they're, they're supported, all supported by the Wellcome Trust. We've got the, uh, the Thailand unit, where I'm based, um, the Vietnam unit, and the Kenya unit. And I'm going to give just a brief overview of each of those. Um, you'll also see there, it says Oxford Centre for Global Health Research. Over the years, quite a lot of people have come, in, largely come back from the tropics. Some have joined straight from other uh, uh, other places in Europe, but mainly coming back from the tropics, senior investigators and have set up their own groups in Oxford. So there, there is now uh, quite a critical mass of tropical medicine researchers within uh, the Centre for Tropical Medicine and Global Health based in Oxford. But most of us are based overseas at one of the three overseas units. So you can see here we've got, uh, these are numbers from the website, I have no idea how accurate they are. 72 principal investigators, 220 Oxford employed staff. I think about two thirds to three quarters of those are actually based overseas. Uh, a lot of local staff, local national uh, scientists and, uh, and um, uh, often a very senior positions uh, uh, and laboratory and field staff, 2000 of those. And this is all, we, we the Oxford obviously it, uh, has to raise funds to, we have to raise funds to get, uh, um, to do, be able to do this research. And so that's where the 340 million pound of research portfolio, I think that's just a snapshot. Um, and one of the major, uh, one of our major aims is to train, to train locally, to train internationally. And so we all have a lot of PhD students. And of course, in order to raise the funds, we have to um, produce um, uh, publications and probably more important publications is impact, uh, impact on health. And that's certainly what the Wellcome Trust wants. Uh, so, uh, and just, just to remind you, there are of course, major uh, tropical health, uh, uh, tropical medicine and global health interests outside of CTMGH. Uh, in the Jenner, for example, uh, um, in the another Department of uh, Population Health, uh, the Department of Pediatrics, elsewhere in the Medical Sciences Division, and, and in fact in Social Sciences and in other divisions in the University. So this is just our bit. And our bit in the NDM, another Department of Medicine, started with this chap on the left. I think most tropical medicine in Oxford started with him. This is, this is Sir David, Professor Sir David Weatherall, who was the Nuffield Professor of Medicine in Oxford uh, when I was a clinical student um, there. And he then went on to become Regis Professor and sadly uh, died just a, a few years ago. Um, he's he's um, uh, here, he's uh, on a rice barge from the Chow Prior River. I think this I, I think this photo originally comes from David Worrell, who's on our speaker list today, and um, David Weatherall is uh, 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 with Peter Williams, who then was the director of the Wellcome Trust. And this is in 1979, and later that year, this unit, which where I work, um, which was the founding director, was David Worrell, uh, was started. The Morrow, we call it, um, Mahidol Oxford Tropical Medicine Research Unit. Um, so this is one of three units, uh, but the units aren't just sort of one unit, they're, they're, kind of, they're all a, a network. So here we have a f an old photograph from I think around about 1980, uh, with David Worrell smiling in the back there, and his wife Mary, um, some of our, our senior Thai um, uh, collaborators, because 
wherever we work in the tropics. The most important thing is having uh, uh, um, excellent um, collaborators and having a key collaborator will lead to the success of the project in, uh, in I think, most people's experience. Uh, you've also got Nick White there, who was the second director of the unit. That was a while ago. It's grown since then. And all the tropical medicine interests of Oxford have grown organically over the years, whether they've been in Oxford or in the tropics. And you see, we started in Thailand, spread from Bangkok, within Thailand to the Thai Myanmar border, to the um, uh, northeast Thailand near the, 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 the Cambodian Lao borders. Um, and then also started a unit, this is where I first got involved in Vietnam, in Ho Chi, uh, Ho Chi Minh City. So that, that was a sort of daughter unit or a part of the network of Moro, but has long since been its own unit. So it's now a sister unit it's run by uh, Professor Guy Thwaites, he's the director there. There's a separate unit now. Then there's a unit in Laos, Longru, in Bangladesh, um, in Chittagong, in Cambodia, Komru. We also have a unit in Kinshasa where we study child, uh, um, severe and uncomplicated malaria in, in African children um, uh, and also malaria in pregnancy. And then we, we, for the last few years, have had a unit in Myanmar, which is still working, still uh, doing work, uh, mainly humanitarian work, despite the uh, disasters that have happened in that country following the coup back in April. And most recently, we opened a little unit in Chiang Rai, up in the north of Thailand, near the Golden Triangle. So that's the sort of thing which happens. And we have lots of collaborators. Everything is collaborative with, with local collaborators, um, with international collaborators. And so these are the places where we work. Um, at any one time. Uh, this, this is a snap, snapshot from actually from uh, pretty much the end of last year. And some of our, all, this, all the units have got involved in COVID research, of course, and some of our COVID sites are not on there. But you see, most of our clinical study sites are collaborative and we work closely with the salmon pink blobs, which are the main Vietnam unit uh, um, sites. Uh, this is, I won't bore you with this, just to show that we're very international. We've got 35 nationalities at the last count amongst our 800 staff. Uh, we've got about 68 postgraduate students at present in the Moro Network, mainly PhD students and DPhil students. Um, and the main thing that we do is clinical investigation, clinical research, clinical trials, and you can see here that um, we've got lots of quite large trials going um, and that's what we've been doing uh, mainly over the past 40 years since the founding of the unit. And there on the left you can see the sort of mix of publications, you know, the subjects, the publications that we produce. And in our unit, in the Moru network, we tend to focus on rural health uh, rather than so urban health, we do, we do do some of that, but many rural health, that's particularly important in, in um, Southeast Asia, where you have the, there's these large areas of upland Southeast Asia, uh, uh, which are quite mountainous, hill tribes live, access to former health care systems, which is, is very restricted, and um, they don't really understand, often don't understand illness and, and their health seeking behaviour is very, very different. Uh, and Getting to the, the, site, the sites is very difficult. Dif uh, difficult to this in the bottom left is in Myanmar. Going to one site which took 15 days trek to get to, to the study site to resupply the workers there. And this upland area has been termed Zomia um, by, by by one writer. It's quite a nice word, so we use it. It's descriptive. So what, what research do we do? Um, the main thing we do is, is, is see what the problems are. I mean, many infectious diseases, not solely. Uh, what are the problems uh, afflicting the, the populations, mainly poor rural populations, where we, so we end up doing epidemiology and diagnostics. Uh, very interesting AMR, major problem in the developing world. 
we do pathophysiology and pathobiology, pathobiology studies. Um, and we try and improve patient care through, through um, community health, trying to work out better ways to look after the critically ill, kind of ICU in resource limited settings, we do a lot of work on that, and improving treatment, which can be pharmacology, pharmacokinetic studies, um, uh, and clinical trials, of course, of new treatments. Uh, there's quite a big program on maternal and child health. And just because it's been such a big thing for us over the past uh, 40 years, we have a theme, Valeria elimination as a theme all to itself. And all of the units, uh, Kenya, Vietnam and Thailand, use this multi-centre approach when doing clinical trials. And in fact, doing lots of studies, observational studies as well, uh, because you can increase the power, you can increase the generalizability of the results, the geographical reach of your research, and and if you're powerful enough, you can uncover heterogeneity and treatment effects and, and disease uh, manifestations. Just a couple of examples of the power of multi-center studies. It's two trials, but one example really. This is, this is um, the first one is the uh, sequelmat study, which is a trial to uh, which we did uh, nearly 20 started nearly 20 years ago now, well 15 years ago now, uh, comparing artesunate with the usual quinine parenterally for the treatment of severe malaria, and this was done in four Asian countries, 11 sites, and uh, mainly in adults, and we found that with artesunate there was a 35% relative reduction in mortality. So this Chinese drug, um, w w quite remarkable drug, was incredibly effective, reduced mortality, uh, re reduced the the uh, mortality from this devastating disease. Um, wasn't clear whether this would also work for African kids. African kids. That's where it are the main sufferers of, in terms of total burden from severe malaria. Uh, that's still the heartland of, of, of malaria in Africa. So the study was repeated in the Aquanat study in Africa, in African children, and a similar result, 23% relative reduction in mortality. So that then led to a change in the treatment guidelines uh, 10 years ago. Uh, uh, yeah, 10 years ago. And that in turn, this is not, these aren't our estimates, this is from the Medicines for Malaria Venture. Uh, that change in treatment has already uh, saved nearly a million lives in terms of uh, um, the deaths prevented by that change in the recommendation. And actually, and of course, lots of other huge, huge pro programmatic effort was put into deploying artesunate rather than quinine. So that's just a, an example of, of impacts and there's examples from Vietnam uh, and Kenya as well. Uh, um, in, the, the, in Vietnam, they did very large, the largest ever TB meningitis studies. And uh, in Kenya, there are multiple very large multi-cent studies, including the FEAST study, which you may have heard of, which showed that giving boluses to very sick uh, kids um, was deleterious and cause an increase in mortality so kids with severe malaria or, or sepsis. Unknown pathophysiology, we don't know why that happens. So moving, uh, first of all, eastwards to the Vietnam unit, as I say now, a separate unit run by Guy, Guy Thwaites. Guy Thwaites is currently um, on a, an island off the uh, off the coast of Vietnam, celebrating his wife's birthday. So can't be with us today, um, but he's given me these uh, some slides. Uh, so I'm grateful to him for that. It's a um, again a multi-centre program. There are four main units: uh, one in Ho Chi Minh City, one in Hanoi, one in Nepal, and one in Jakarta. Obviously, Indonesia, a huge population, very important place to, to do uh, medical research. Um, and that's a very nice mission statement from him. Our vision is to have local, regional, and global impact on health 
by leading a locally driven research program on infectious diseases in Southeast Asia. And apart from the Southeast Asia bit, that could probably apply to all of us. Uh, so this is just a little bit of, uh, of history and also showing you what, what, how the science has developed. It's all organic as, as, as you, um, uh, as we, met, we talked about with the Thailand unit. So we've got Debbie Waller, who was a, a GP in Beaumont Street and came out and ran the unit for the first year there with Nick White and, and Professor Hien, remarkable man, key to have a local collaborator who you know, wants to, to, to has the same vision. Um, and you can see we started working on malaria, tetanus, uh, plague, uh, and typhoid, and then dengue, uh, and then brain infections. It was a particular interest of, of Jeremy Farrer, who, who took over as director in 1996, and uh, he started the work on, on TB meningitis and then worked on avian influenza, and did seminal work on, on that. Um, so you can then AMR and also uh, some one health work and lots of different methodologies that we have to develop and, and have in-house or have really good collaborators, the in-house research methods that, that are there in Oxford, Oxford University Clinical Research Unit is what the Vietnam unit is called, uh, at least that's what it's called in Vietnam. It's called AOCRU for Eichmann Oxford Clinical Research Unit in Indonesia. So um, the traditional stuff we do, this is this is Guy's approach, this is his nice graphic, um, is clinical research using randomized controlled trials. You know, how do we get sick patients well? And we need laboratory support. All our most of our laboratory work is which can be quite sophisticated in terms of sequencing, immunology, etc., is it is done to support the clinical research. And that can help you work out what the, the pathways to health could be, what you know, what pathophysiology of the disease is, how you can interrupt it, how you can improve health. And then in Vietnam they go into the community and uh, uh, involve the, the whole community. And so there's community health program epidemiology, modelling, genomics, public engagement, health economics and social science, and that feeds um, feeds into the research in hospitals as well. So research at community level, hospital level and laboratory level, and then how to get impact and influence is you, you work nationally and internationally uh, with governments and with WHO and other organisations uh, to try to to, to uh, translate your research findings into uh, impact on health. These are the diseases that the Vietnam unit is currently working on. So we've got um, TB, malaria and dengue are probably the three big ones at the moment, and you can see the rest there as well. And of course, everybody is doing COVID-19, and I'm not going to talk about that because you probably had an enormous amount of that over the last couple of years. Um, and we need to get funding, we try and get personal funding for, um, uh, for, for our young scientists uh, and welcome fellowships. Obviously publications are important and you can see here that, uh, that the Vietnam unit guy and the, and the rest of the team there have, have produced some high impact um, publications over the last five years, lots of PhD students. All mainly, probably almost all of these are are um, local PhD students. We we do have a few in both Thailand and Vietnam, a few more in Thailand of, of international PhD students as well. And impact, getting impact, um, this sitting on advice, such advisory boards, uh, etc. It's very important. Um, so there we go. And I stole this from David Worrell. Uh, this is uh, um, him in Ho Chi Minh City in 2004, I believe, uh, milking a Malayan crate uh, of venom. And you can see uh, Jeremy Farrer's not particularly impressed by that, or, or he's rather maybe impressed, but uh, slightly worried. And I think that's Dr. Vin there. Um, anyway, so 
uh, moving westwards to East Africa. And our next speaker, in fact, is going to be Philip Bijon, who Professor Philip Bijon is the director of the Kemri Wellcome Trust uh, programme, um, which is, uh, like the other programmes, institutionally linked to Oxford. Um, so he's going to tell you a bit more about their work on malaria in the next talk. Uh, just describe uh, where their sites are. Again, we've got this hub and spoke topology, which we have in most of the Oxford tropical units and their networks. Um, the, you've got uh, uh, the three main hubs in uh, Khalifi on the coast, where there are amazing state-of-the-art laboratories and other facilities um, uh, adjacent to a uh, provincial hospital. I believe it's a provincial hospital. And that's, uh, the, the, I think that the Camry Welcome unit started about two years before the Vietnam unit. So Vietnam unit started in 91, I think it was about 89, um, and got going around um, in earnest around about 91. And there's also a hub in, in Nairobi, uh, and where, where a lot of international work, population health modelling, that sort of thing, health economics, pragmatic clinical research, implementation science. And in Uganda, there's a lot of severe malaria and kids there, and clinical research happens in Mbali, uh, where there's high transmission, and, uh, and, and a very good team of, of clinical researchers to collaborate with. <clears throat> and of course, there's uh, other places as well, not just in Kenya, Uganda. They're, they have collaborating centres in, in Tanzania and Ethiopia too. These are the research themes for the Kenya unit. Um, vaccinology, genomics and, transmi and transmission of pathogens, population health, um, uh, health systems re uh, research, research into ethics, and of course, clinical research. Um, they have a demographic surveillance system um, around Khalifi for the population health side and lots of other parts of the research. Fantastic labs, as I say, with fantastic staff. It's a nice picture, somebody standing on a chair, hopefully safely, taking that photo. And the clinical research, these big multi-centre studies into fluids, the fee study, um, there's been a, also a study on blood transfusion, which is, uh, uh, has been seminal too, and on oxygen. How much oxygen? Look at that! Look at that way of giving oxygen to these babies. It's um, and doesn't do any good. Uh, uh, yeah, above a certain threshold. Uh, nutrition, anti-malarials. Still a lot of work on on malaria and antibiotics. All three of these units, uh, Kenya, Vietnam, and Thailand work closely together, they collaborate on lots of lots of studies. So a lot of uh, of um, our studies uh, we do with, it, which, which we have African sites, we do with Philip and his team as well. So just some highlights from the, from the Can, Can We Welcome Trust research programme. Uh, number one, Philip's going to talk about in the next talk, 115 years of malaria data in Africa. And then in the, I think it's the uh, fourth talk at three o'clock, Adrian Hill, Professor Adrian Hill will talk about the amazing vaccinology work that he's done with the uh, Philip and, and, and the team in uh, the Kemi Welcome unit on Ebola, Rifai fever, and of course, malaria. There's the, I've mentioned the fee study, critical care, Kath Maitland uh, is, is uh, the, the main uh, PI on, on those studies. Um, and number four, the largest cohort of human malaria challenge to determine mechanisms of immunity. <laughs> this is where healthy volunteers, you give them malaria. <clears throat> and you follow them closely and then you treat them. It's a, it's a very, it's a, a quite a major undertaking, uh, especially to do in a, a, an endemic setting like on the, the, the coast of, of Kenya, but very, very valuable in terms of the uh, information you can you can gain. 
So that's the that's the end of of, of the uh, introduction to the three overseas tropical units. I'm sorry I couldn't cover more. Um, you may have noticed that the the final speaker on our list today is uh, Professor Sassi Molyneux, and she, she has recorded her talk, but sadly she can't be with us today because her father has has just passed away um, just on Tuesday night. And I'd like to just just mention the tribute to Malcolm Molyneux, who worked at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine and spent. 30 years of his life in Malawi, setting up the Wellcome Trust Malawi uh, Liverpool unit and um, uh, also helping set up the um, University of Malawi College of Medicine, that's medical school in Malawi. Um, an amazing clinical investigator and an amazing man as well. Uh, he also was the co-inventor co of the uh, Blantar Coma Score. Um, and uh, sadly, he died on Tuesday night, and uh, we all miss him very much. <laughs>